Well, we've come full circle. Literally. The ninth official Superloop route to be introduced. It's time for another loopy review of the SL2. Hey, that rhymes! The SL2 runs from Walthamstow Central to North Woolwich via Gants Hill, Ilford, Barking, Galleons Reach and King George V, technically. Now, this route was meant to start on the 9th of March 2024, but for whatever reason, TfL decided to pull it forward a week early and started on the 2nd, which in turn led to some rather hasty last minute preparations, as you can see. Although it provides assistance to its stopping counterpart, the 123, between Walthamstow and Ilford, I believe there's a second counterpart involved, the 366, between Ilford and Barking. And although the 366 takes a more indirect route between Ilford and Barking, it's about 25 minutes on a 366, the SL2 will also make that journey time a bit more quicker between the two town centres. So yeah, I guess you could say it has two stopping counterparts. Now as far as first days go, preparation is everything. So when my SL2 did eventually rock up, I was very surprised to see that not only it wasn't blinded properly, but it wasn't even wrapped. In fact, only four buses were wrapped on the first day. These being HA 39, 45, 52 and 53. To be honest, now don't go hating on Areva because if anything, this is on TFL. I mean, think about it. You've pulled back the launch date by an entire week. So of course everyone at DX is going to be running around like headless hummingbirds trying to scrape all this crap together. I mean, what, what did we expect really? <laughs> so, yeah. TFL, you did them dirty. Well, at least they've got charges. Now, when the tender came out on the 20th of October, there was some speculation over what the official allocation type was meant to be. There were two options. A, the HVs displaced from Route 242 loss, or B, the HAs displaced from the Brixton loss of Routes 133 and 333. The latter was chosen. Smart move. But honestly, I thought the route was getting HVs because... To my awareness, it was meant to be an allocation that was similar to Route 123. But hey, I'm not complaining. With this, it also means that the SL9, 10, 1 and 2 all have the same allocation type. Although be it that one's electric and the other's hybrid. Despite my bus being rather sluggish, my journey time was actually quite impressive, with Walthamstow to Ilford being completed in about 20 minutes. God, that's impressive. Um, but yeah, honestly, this route's going to be popular. I can definitely see it being handy, especially for people in the Ilford and Barking areas as well. I don't know much about North Woolwich though. I mean, maybe for the ferry staff there. That's about it really.
Now, seeing as the SL2 goes through two major town hubs, there's not really an awful lot to pick out about the route that sticks out to me. Although there are two main places. The first is along the A406. I mean, come on, it's the motorway. Who doesn't love a route that goes on the motorway? And with Superloop, you're going at 10 times the speed, even with ISA involved. My second is along Pier Road. That beautiful bridge that goes between King George V and the pier in Woolwich, stunning. And attention to all plane spotters out there. You need to come to this bridge. Hop on the SL2 when you can, if you can, I'm sure you can, and just get down to this bridge here on Pier Road because it's beautiful, it's amazing for plane spotting. You've got the whole view in the distance of London City Airport. Unfortunately, when I went, there weren't pl any planes going because it was the weekend. Oh. But when you get the chance, do come here and take some beautiful pictures because honestly, you're missing out. There's not an awful lot going off in North Woolwich right now, seeing as it is just a ferry terminal, along with the smell of the Thames and the pair of odd socks that managed to make it down the drain a few weeks ago. Anyway, in the background of this shot, you can clearly see some construction work happening. More new homes in the pipeline. So when this gentrification plan of the North Woolwich area is finally complete, I'm sure this route will only serve as a further benefit to the people and future generations living in this area. Amen. Ah, the golden gem. Now I think it's safe to say that DW333 was the highlight of everyone's day. So much so that everyone was fighting over it, literally. Um, a massive shout out to uh, the fellow enthusiast who I met on the bus who told me about the working. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have dared check LBF that day, seriously. I would have had 10,000 other things on my mind apart from getting shots. So, massive shout out to you. Uh, but yeah, apparently one of the drivers weren't trained for the HA, so hey presto, they chucked a DW on it. Obviously it was fantasized, but that's not relevant, come on. I mean, it just brings, just brought more variety for the first day. Made it more interesting. Now, as big as Walthamstow bus station is, there just isn't enough room for everyone. So after the SL2 drops off at stop X, it then goes down Selborne Walk, loops back round and parks on South Grove, as you're witnessing now. In my opinion, I think the SL2 really should be standing inside Walthamstow bus station, not at South Grove. I mean, it's kind of a waste of time going all the way down and spinning back round and coming back up. I mean, those drivers can't catch a break really, can they? Um, but obviously, if this were to happen, would come the expense of kicking something out of the bus station. And quite frankly, I can't see any other route in the bus station that's really big enough to kick out so um, in the end I guess it had to be a case of just wing it, park on a curb or something. I mean they had to kick the 34th from James Street for the SL1. I mean what else could we kick out of the bus station for the SL2? Uh, w11 perhaps? That'd go down well with locals wouldn't it? So yeah this is just the situation now but although it makes the SL2's life a little bit more difficult I think they'll manage. I think so. Oh, it's you again. However, with all of this, there is a downside. Just, just one, just one. 
If you've not picked up throughout the video, the SL2 goes through some rather traffic prone hotspots, predominantly the A406 which makes up more or less 95% of the route. Without a doubt during rush hour this is going to be the route's biggest challenge, but to be fair we were kind of expecting it anyway weren't we? Right, time for my ratings. So, overall, I'm going to give the SL2 a 5.5 out of 10. I was going to say 5, but it's not all that bad. Plus the DW working, really, you know, that's the cherry on top for me. Uh, it's alright, you know. It's, a decent, it's an okay route at best. I mean, places like Ilford and Barking don't exactly scream adventure to me, if you know what I mean. But uh, yeah, and the buses are decent as well, despite all the nonsense that occurred. Some of them are actually quite, quite good. It's just HA43 that let me down. Um, but yeah, another route that I can see having a, a brilliant impact on East London. Um, bustling with potential, and I'm sure patronage will skyrocket in the coming weeks. So that leaves us with one more, the SL4, but you'll be waiting a while for that as the Silvertown Tunnel doesn't open until 2025, so hopefully in the meantime we get some new buses or new designs of buses because to be honest BYDs are getting a bit dead. I'm liking Electroliners right now, they're becoming my favourite thing. Mm, yeah. So until then, make sure to leave a like, hit subscribe and comment below what you think of the SL2 and I shall catch you next year for the final ever loopy review. Bye bye.